Logitech's recently released G502X Plus aims to improve on the previous models while still delivering a feature-packed ergo gaming mouse meant to try and keep up with the competition. In today's video, we'll take an in-depth look so you guys can decide whether or not it's gonna be worth it to you. In the box, let's gain the mouse itself. You'll get a DPI shift button cover, a USB-C charging cable, dongle for that wireless connection, the dongle adapter, then along with that, some documentation. The shape of the Plus is almost exactly the same as the previous versions of the G502 being that same iconic larger ergonomic mouse with a thumb scoop, making for a very comfortable grip whether you are going to be using it for gaming or maybe you just want to use it for some different daily activities. And the shape of it will definitely lend itself either to that palm or claw style of grip being a little bit too big for your fingertip grippers out there unless you have very large hands. You get two built-in rubber grips on either side of the mouse, which so far have made for a really nice and grippy texture to get a good hold on with the top of that shell being a little bit of a smoother plastic, which I think feels pretty nice with my main hope being that just doesn't wear off too fast like I've had issues with the G Pro Superlite. Of course, it is after months of heavy use. Logitech did decide to ditch that adjustable weight system that we've seen on some of the old G502s, now limiting it to the weight that it comes at, which is lighter as they were able to shave some of that weight off from the previous iteration of the G502, now coming in at 106 grams, which is definitely not bad at all, and also around six grams lighter than the new Basilisk V3 Pro. On the bottom of the mouse, you get four white PTFE skates with one at the bottom, top and that one ring around the sensor also creating for a pretty smooth and consistent glide but as always with this shape of mouse i wish we could just get one more skate or foot in that kind of dead zone across from the thumb scoop side of the mouse we just have a larger section with no skate which i can feel at times does create a little bit more drag on the bottom you also have that removable puck which when removed shows you where that dongle can be stored along with where it can be connected to a charging dock if you do choose to add that onto your purchase just realize that is pretty spendy the switch on the bottom allows you to either turn the mouse on or off. And when it is on, you will have the option of using it with that included dongle, which is using Logitech's new and what they call their light speed wireless technology, which is supposedly some 68% faster than the previous gen of wireless connection, which for me so far has felt really spot on with no connection issues. Although I can definitely say that I can't really tell any perceivable differences from their older gen technology. The G502 Plus is using the Hero 25K sensor, which is so far for me felt really precise and smooth with no issues. One cool thing that you get with the Plus is you have the option of sharing the dongle with another light speed device using that same technology, like the Logitech G915 TKL keyboard, which I did recently review. When that switch is off on the bottom, you can use it with the wire via that USB-C port on the front, which you'll have to do to charge it unless you have that charging dock. You don't have to charge it very often though, because it has all the way up to 130 hours of battery life when the RGB is completely off, and then all the way up to 37 hours if you have the RGB on full blast the whole time. So a lot of battery life to work with there, especially if you do opt to have the RGB lighting on a little bit lower setting. The G502X Plus is using what Logitech's calling light force hybrid optical mechanical switches, which are supposed to just give you the speed and performance of an optical switch, also also retaining the feeling of a mechanical switch, and have so far to me felt really nice with the mouse one and two, having very little to no pre-travel with some post-travel present, but really only when you're actually clicking more towards the front of those front mouse clicks and not towards the back. The scroll is also done very very well in the G502X, having a very crispy response on both the side to side click on the scroll wheel and also that push in. And the actual spinning of the wheel has very distinct notches that you can feel as you roll it over. The button directly behind that scroll is what allows you to go between that free spinning mode and that normal mode, which I think the implementation of it feels a lot smoother on the G502 versus the new Basilisk V3 Pro, being a very quick switch back and forth and feeling very stable in both modes. The second button back from the scroll wheel allows you to cycle between different profiles that you can set up in the software. Off to the left of your left mouse click though, you do get two buttons there, which will be default tied to either adjusting your DPI up or down, but can of course be mapped to anything you'd want it to do in the game or on your computer in that software. They do feel really nice though and aren't too far out of the way off to the side to make them still easy to reach and tap while in game. Side buttons also feel very nice having minimal pre and post travel or side to side playing them. They do stick out a decent ways from the mouse though and are easy to find but feel a little bit harder to use when you're in a claw grip. In front of those though you do have your sniper button which is going to come tied already to the DPI shift mode which will lower your sensitivity or DPI allowing you to make those more precise movements when you might need them. You do also have the option of just taking that sniper button out though and putting the little plug button that it comes with if you don't want to use it.
The RGB, although not all over the mouse, I think has done very well with it kind of sitting in between where the shell splits and would normally meet on the back, creating for a cool look that does shine through quite well, and its colors and effects can be all easily adjusted within the Logitech G Hub software. You can also easily reassign key, set profiles, adjust things like also the inactivity lighting quite easily in the software. Logitech's G502X Plus is a feature-packed mouse which comes in at $160, and no, it's definitely not cheap. It's not going to be right for every gamer out there. I think if you're already a fan of the G502 or are looking for a mouse that offers as much customization as the G502, you definitely aren't going to be disappointed. You get some really nice switches in there, some great battery life, especially if you can live without the RGB being on that full brightness. And overall, of course, just a plethora of different features, including that really cool free spinning scroll wheel that really does shape this mouse out to be a great option for gamers who just want their mouse to do everything. Now, one of the big things to consider, of course, is going to be the competition for the G502X Plus, like the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro, which you can now take a look at on the screen now. 